السلام علیکم فسٹ ایئر ان پریویس لیکچر وی ہیو کورڈ دی فیچرز اینڈ فنکشنز آف ایپیڈرمس دین آئی ٹولڈ یو اباؤٹ دی ریزیڈنٹ سیلز آف ایپیڈرمس الانگ ود وٹ فنکشنز دے پرفارم آلسو وی کورڈ دی پگمنٹ ایبنومیلٹیز In today's lecture, uh, we will start with the dermis, uh, its components and layers. Also, uh, we will cover uh, hypodermis and its functions. And, uh, and then uh, we will move on to a very important topic of cutaneous circulation. So let's start then. Uh, remember I told you about uh, the junction, the uh, dermo-epidermal junction. I told you that uh, this is a junctional zone between dermis and epidermis and um, it is a site of uh, antigenicity. It means that uh, this is the area where the actual binding of the antigen with immune cells that takes place. Right, so what is uh, dermis? Uh, it's a connective tissue layer and as far as the function of dermis is concerned, uh, The dermis, it does not contribute to the barrier function of the skin directly, but it gives skin strength and elasticity. Now the uh, components of uh, dermis are uh, uh, elastin and uh, collagen fibers. Uh, the elastin fibers, they, uh, they provide elasticity for the stretch, while uh, the collagen fibers, the type 1 collagen fibers, they provide uh, strength. And then uh, there, are, uh, there is abundance of uh, blood vessels, Uh, specialized nerve endings and uh, immune cells which are present in dermis. Now uh, move on to the dermal blood vessels. Uh, the dermal blood vessels they they not only supply both the dermis and the epidermis but uh, they they also play a major role in the temperature regulation uh, the caliber of these vessels uh, that is subject to control and uh, This is how the uh, volume of the blood which is flowing through these vessels that can be controlled to vary the amount of heat exchange between uh, the skin surface vessels and the external environment. Hmm. And then there are uh, dermal uh, nerve endings which could be afferent and efferent also. The uh, receptors at the peripheral endings of the efferent nerve fibers in the dermis, they detect uh, certain sensations such as the pressure, temperature, pain and uh, also some other uh, somatosensory input. While the uh, efferent nerve endings in the dermis, uh, they control the uh, mainly the blood vessels caliber but in addition to that uh, they also control uh, hair erection and uh, discretion by skin's exocrine glands 
next we uh, look at the um, a little detail uh, of the uh, structure of dermis uh, dermis consists of uh, two layers the papillary layer and the reticular layer papillary layer is the superficial layer uh, with the rich vascularity and uh, thin collagen and elastic fibers while the reticular layer it is the deeper layer with thick elastic and collagen fibers right the cellular component of the dermis that consists of uh, the um, mast cells macrophages uh, dermal dendritic cells and fibroblasts i will give you very little detail of uh, these cells one by one mast cells they are involved in both the immune and the inflammatory responses which are uh, taking place in the skin uh, what actually happens that uh, these uh, uh, activated cutaneous mast cells they release certain substances uh, such as uh, histamine uh, prostaglandins uh, leukotrienes, cytokines and chemokines and uh, what do these chemicals do these agents they basically increase the cutaneous blood flow and the capillary permeability and you know that these two mechanisms they they are integral to any inflammatory response all right then uh, uh, the macrophages macrophages uh, you know that they are uh, phagocytic so they aid in a number of immune related uh, responses and uh, uh, the dermal dendritic cells they are the antigen presenting cells uh, I already told you that uh, in the epidermis there were Langerhans cells which were the antigen presenting cells. So these dermal dendritic cells they are very much similar to the Langerhans cells in the epidermis and uh, uh, because of this action they are, they, they are integral to the cutaneous adaptive immunity responses. all right and uh, then come the fibroblasts which are responsible for both the synthesis and uh, uh, the degradation of fibrous and non-fibrous connective tissue proteins so <clears throat> we can say that the fibroblasts they are important in uh, wound healing and scarring and uh, this was all about the uh, dermis. Now we move on to the hypodermis. You know, uh, this uh, word sub, sub means under, or if we use the word hypodermis, hypo means below, and uh, uh, skin is referred as cutaneous. So this is how uh, you can define this layer as a uh, loose layer of connective tissue beneath the skin mm. all right so if we uh, look into the uh, structure of uh, hypodermis the this uh, layer it mainly consists of uh, the adipose tissue and the blood vessels now what is adipose tissue uh, the the deposits of the fat cells throughout the body they are collectively referred to as the adipose tissue and interestingly uh, around 50% of total body fat that is located within the hypodermis of an average person so <clears throat> if you want uh, to uh, estimate the uh, peripheral fat stores of your chubby friend then uh, 
it is possible to take the caliper measures of uh, skin fold thickness. Uh, then I will tell you, uh, right, the functions of epidermis. Uh, your epidermis, it uh, cushions the skin and it serves the purpose of uh, insulation. Then it allows the skin to slide over the underlying uh, structures. Uh, and uh, also the skin is anchored to the underlying tissue of muscle or bone by the hypodermis. <clears throat> now this is very important. <coughs> you see the uh, circulation through different skin areas that is not of equal degree but it shows great variations i give you an example that uh, uh, the blood flow it is greatest in the fingertips where it is about 200 times more than the area with the least blood supply now what is the purpose of cutaneous circulation of course uh, to provide nutrition to the skin but uh, in addition to its nutritive role, uh, a part of blood supply through the skin that is, uh, that is meant for the temperature regulation. And uh, therefore, uh, our skin, it receives more blood than, uh, than that needed only for its metabolic activity. <clears throat> Right, now we will look at the uh, general pattern uh, our cutaneous circulation follows. What happens that uh, the arterioles in the skin, they break up into metarterioles and the arteriolar ends of capillaries just like they do in other areas of the body. But uh, here in skin, the capillaries, they form loops like uh, the loops of hairpins. And these loops, they come at right angles to the skin. Uh, these uh, capillary loops, they are more marked in the nail folds, nail beds and around the sweat glands. And uh, then there is a subcapillary venous plexus. Actually what happens that the venous ends of the capillaries, they join to form the collecting, collecting venules, right? Now the collecting venules, they join each other to form the subcapillary venous plexus. Uh, this uh, venous plexus, it runs horizontally uh, under the basis of the papillae and uh, this plexus that is uh, deeper to the capillary loops and it is drained into still deeper veins. Now this subcapillary venous plexus it has a unique feature that uh, the walls of uh, the vessels of this plexus they are thin and uh, therefore when they are distended they they can take up and accommodate a large amount of blood right and then there are arteriovenous anastomoses so <clears throat> In uh, addition to the system of the vessels which I described earlier, um, there are present in the deeper layer of the dermis uh, a large number of uh, arteriovenous anastomoses. And these anastomoses, they serve as a direct communication between the arterial and the venous systems. Uh, these anastomoses they are mostly found at uh, the lips, nose, uh, 
ears and uh, and the whole surfaces of hands and feet <clears throat> uh now uh, they have also got a unique feature that uh, the walls of their vessels they contain smooth muscle so uh, these vessels they can either constrict or dilate and they receive the nerve supply from the sympathetic nervous system so uh, the stimulation of the sympathetic nerves that decreases the blood flow through these uh, arteriovenous anastomoses while the inhibition of the sympathetic nerves that will greatly increase the blood flow hmm. right so now uh, we will see that how the cutaneous circulation that is uh, uh, regulated uh, the sympathetic nervous system it uh, it supplies the vaso it's it supply both vasoconstrictor fibers also and vasodilator fibers also uh, but mainly it supplies vasoconstrictor fibers to the vessels of the skin of whole body um, however it is only the vessels of the hand that are under a significant tonic control and this thing this is shown by the fact that if if uh, if the synthetic supply that is interrupted only the vessels of the hand they will show marked vasodilation right and then there are uh, uh, sympathetic vasodilator fibers which also have been described as supplying the skin vessels but their presence it has been questioned right in order to explain the mechanism of of blushing uh, i give you an example that uh, see when 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 the hand that is immersed in hot water there is vasodilation and uh, this is considered uh, to be due to the release of bradykinin which is a potent vasodilator from the sweat glands now the same mechanism that is believed to be responsible for blushing in which the uh, vasodilation that occurs over the face under some embarrassing conditions and uh, then uh, you know according to some authors uh, there is also release of uh, acetylcholine from the cholinergic sympathetic nerve endings um uh, the, uh, the the evidence of this is that the cholinesterase it has been found in in abundance in the arteriovenous anastomoses which are the vessels primarily dilated during the uh, during body warming right now moving on to the uh, veins of the skin you see the veins of uh, the skin they can also show vasoconstriction and uh, this phenomenon that is abolished when a uh, sympathectomy it has been done or or when the sympathetic nerve fibers they are blocked by some local anesthetic agent such as uh, procaine uh, <clears throat> the cutaneous vessels they are uh, extremely sensitive to the circulating catecholamines and they show a uh, severe vasoconstriction in response to these catecholamines right now we will look that how does our cutaneous circulation behaves in case of emergencies uh such as uh, uh, a hypovolemic shock so what happens that uh, in case of uh, shock for example hypovolemic shock or in any other kind of shock but mostly hypovolemic 
skin it becomes cold and clammy and uh, what is the cause for this uh, appearance uh, the cause is the uh, intense activation of sympathetic nervous system because uh, this activation uh, activation of the sympathetic nervous system that is actually body's natural emergency response and uh, uh, you also uh, must know that cutaneous circulation it uh, occupy the uh, lowest position on the circulatory hierarchy uh, so uh, whenever there is a sympathetic nervous system activation there is intense activation of the sympathetic nervous system the blood flow to the vascular beds of skin that is shut off first of all <clears throat> now we will look that uh, how this uh, activation of the sympathetic nervous system that results in uh, this particular appearance of skin the cold and clammy appearance Uh, actually what happens that uh, the uh, cooling of the skin uh, that is uh, due to the intense cutaneous vasoconstriction because uh, this intense vasoconstriction it reduces the blood flow to as low as uh, uh, less than six milliliters per minute so when the blood it drains from the skin then the temperature of the skin that cools accordingly now why skin becomes clammy it means the clammy means moist to touch uh, actually what happens that uh, the sympathetic nervous system uh, activation that uh, at the same time it stimulates the sweat glands and uh, you should know that sweat that is a modified uh, blood filtrate so when the uh, intense activation of the sympathetic nervous system stimulates the sweat glands they should be profuse sweating over the skin but there is also intense uh, cutaneous vasoconstriction so it means that the blood flow it has been curtailed so the output of sweat that is minimal so this is how uh, skin becomes slightly clammy to the touch right so <clears throat> this is how a, uh, a typical appearance of shock that is achieved through uh, the intense activation of the sympathetic uh, nervous system Now, what is the role of uh, uh, skin circulation during the thermoregulatory responses? Uh, heat loss or heat gain that is most effectively regulated at the level of skin. Uh, it is very simple that to dissipate the heat blood flow uh, that is brought in close proximity to body surface and uh, to uh, conserve heat a uh, blood flow that is shunted away from the body surface so the question is that how does this heat transfer occurs uh, uh, you know the glabrous skin it contains uh, deep arteriovenous anastomosis that I already told you and these anastomoses they allow uh, the blood to bypass the surface capillary beds now the non glabrous skin which is the hairy skin uh, it does not have the arteriovenous anastomosis but it does have deep and superficial capillaries <clears throat> and the most efficient heat transfer with the environment that occurs when the blood is shunted through these surface capillaries now uh, look at this uh, diagram uh, this shows the uh, control 
of the cutaneous vasculature through thermoregulatory responses. Um, you see that postganglionic adrenergic nerves, they, they constrict the cutaneous arteries, veins and the anastomosis. <clears throat> and when we remove the, uh, this uh, constrictor influence, uh, and when we remove this and uh, we actively dilate the vessels, uh, then uh, this thing, it increases the blood flow through the cutaneous vasculature. Actually, what happens during uh, the heat stress, look in this column of the heat stress, during the heat stress, the venous volume, that increases also to provide additional time for the heat transfer, uh, as well as the heart rate and the cardiac output, that also increases. But uh, the other vascular beds, such as the renal circulation or the splanchnic circulation, <clears throat> they show uh, vasoconstriction. And why do they show vasoconstriction? That is just to facilitate the skin blood flow to increase. So that is how uh, our cutaneous vasculature, it behaves during uh, the thermoregulatory responses. That was just an overview that how the temperature regulation that is uh, achieved. We will discuss that in detail. Uh, now we move on to uh, the cutaneous nerves. You see our skin is uh, dense with the sensory nerve fibers. <clears throat> the cutaneous senses, they, they are a part of somatosensory system which monitor the events which occur within or at the surface of the body. And uh, interestingly, every square millimeter of our skin it represents an opportunity to interact with and uh, analyze the external environment uh, and uh, these uh, cutaneous nerves they they provide us with the uh, uh, tension nociception pruritoception and uh, thermoception uh, so all these functions they are served by the cutaneous nerves <clears throat> right so we finish here and uh, next time I will uh, give you uh, functions of skin which is your university question um, so that's it Take care.